What's up everyone, Michael Young here from R305 Labs and this is gonna be the wrap up for Apple's WWDC 2012 Developer Conference. Uh, the 2012 Apple Worldwide Developer Conference keynote just ended a few hours ago with many exciting announcements and releases. Apple updated their MacBook Pro line, introduced a new operating system and a new version of iOS. So this roundup is going to be broken down into three parts, MacBooks, new operating system and new iOS. Here's a brief summary of the updates and they are pretty exciting. So let's start with the most exciting one which is the MacBook line and what Apple did to it. So a new line of MacBook Pros have been announced and they are now being called the next generation MacBook. In line with their recent practice, they have removed the optical drive to keep it to a slim 0.71 inches, which is even thinner than Phil Schiller's finger, which was of course the joke everyone laughed at at the conference. It will feature a Retina display packing 2880 times 1800 pixels into a 15.4 inch screen. There's only one screen size, no 13 inch or 11 inch, presumably because Apple did not have the time or adequate resources at the time to test out to test it out on uh, other screens. This amounts to a whooping 220 pixels per inch which is more or less the same as the same pixel per inch density as in the new iPad it the insides are packed to the gills it features a top of the line quad core i5 or i7 processor a configurable up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, gigabytes of ram uh nvidia caplet geforce gt 650m gpu and wait folks it also features a flash memory ssd basically which is found in today's macbook airs uh, of up to 768 gigabytes so no kidding here the ones that we are getting in a stock model for the macbook air today is only 256 and this is configurable up to 768 with the retina display this is a mind-blowing computer it has a battery life rated at seven hours and to charge it you'll need a magsafe 2 port which is con completely different from the original MagSafe that we are using right now. It is noticeably thinner than the one we are using right now and do note that MagSafe 2 is not compatible with the original MagSafe. It also includes two microphone and speakers which Apple is boasting to be one of the best you'll ever hear coming out of a laptop. I'm guessing that the parts from the pictures on the slideshow that the parts are soldered into the motherboard of the next generation MacBook Pro. In an interview in the demo uh, video, John Jonathan Ive said that it is more elegant and efficient if Apple had used their own parts instead of something instead of parts that they bought from other manufacturers. So we are expecting to see a uh, proprietary part soldered into the motherboard of the new MacBook Pro. This means that any hope of you trying to tinker with storage space and other innards are gone. So if you want to change SSD, change your uh, hard drive and stuff and you just want to play around, I suggest you get the older MacBook. It should be remarkably quieter due to asymmetrically placed fans which is something Apple experimented with. It features backlight keyboard which is a huge uh, importance to me because I block at night and I watch and I type and I go on Twitter I basically do most of my stuff at night and so without the backlight keyboard it would be a huge disadvantage for me so it's nice that Apple included that they also included of course the huge multi trackpad that is being featured in every single MacBook these days. It features, okay, so the base model, which ships today, carries 2.13 gigahertz i7 quad core processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 SSD flash storage, and it ships today for 200, I mean, 2,000, 
199 it is quite the starting price for a base model but with that you get a ton of stuff for example 256 gb gigabytes of ssd and 8 gigabytes of ram and a top of the line processor so the 13 and 15 inch macbook pro that we have today are all getting a bump to ivy bridge processor not much other improvement otherwise and they are all retaining the same price there was no mention of the 17 inch macbook pros i have always thought that those were the ones selling pretty badly because if someone wanted something portable with a sizable screen they would have went with the macbook pro 15 inch if someone wanted a large display they would have went with the imac so what is the point of a 17 inch the 11 inch and 13 inch macbook airs are also getting the obligatory spec bump to an ivy bridge processor and i was kind of disappointed and shocked that these weren't the ones getting the retina because i definitely love the airline much more than the pro just my personal opinion thank you guys so much for watching to for listening rather to the part one of the apple wwdc conference 2012 roundup this is the macbook section part one of three i'll see you in the next section thank you